Hey, welcome to the Mushroom Report. Let's get into the conversation. Leave your comment below. Ladies, why do Christian men not pursue? Let's talk. I want y'all to go in. Why are the reasons men do not pursue in the church? Comment below. Let's get to the show. Hey, welcome to the Blessing Report with Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy. In this video, our sponsor is Hissa Branch well, with their clothing brand and the Solo Cristo shirt. And we are talking about today, why do Christian men not pursue? I know the last time I made a relationship video, it was like October, November of last year, actually went pretty viral. And I really just wanted to talk about this and I know my videos are usually Bible study based and um, these more like conversational stuff is more relational and more um, practical in application. So I'm giving my top five reasons Christian men don't pursue. And all right, we're going to start with number one godliness and actually being saved and so this is the thing christian women always say men in the world approach me more often than men in the church but here's the thing that's effortless this <laughs> that is effortless they're operating out of their flesh out of their natural instinct of trying to sleep with you and have sex with you yo i even did this in college not that i had sex <laughs> but i was just pulling numbers just to pull numbers because a girl was fine and there is no intentionality in there there's no effort so they shouldn't be credited for doing that and just getting numbers, there's no intentionality, there's no pursuit, there's no commitment in there. All there is is um, very surface level stuff like um, liking how you look, not what you're worth, not what um, your personality is. So don't credit confidence for an uncontrolled sexual appetite, right? And don't... Um, call manhood um, what is sexual impulse rather it's just fleshliness it's just sin it's just being worldly so don't equate manhood to their sexual lust but call cowardice um, our own self-control and having the ability to not be driven by looks and not be driven by sexual appetite all right so this is what a man of god and actually being saved is thinking when he is interested in you but actually not pursuing all right uh, it could be like hey i like her but my walk with god is not where i would want it or need it to be right so if my bible study is inconsistent if my prayer life isn't where it needs to be to lead her properly i'm not going to add her to this nonsense and so that type of um willpower um self-control and self-restraint and denial is how to properly um pursue a woman and how to not um, be led by the flesh but actually be led by the holy spirit because i'm not um being led by my own desires and adding chaos and just crap to your life as a um, woman of God. So that just takes um, spiritual maturity and it takes wisdom to know what it requires to actually lead a woman of God. All right. Number two, why Christian men do not pursue? You're lying. <laughs> And Christian women are oblivious, all right? And when women of God say, Christian men do not pursue me, what they're really saying is that Christian men that I am interested in don't pursue me. And that's the reality of it. Because you are not counting men that you are curving uh, and that you are not interested in, but they actually are sliding into your DMs or asking to get lunch or dinner or a coffee or whatever. And you're just not feeling it, right? And so the reality is you should say, um, what am I doing where the men that I am interested are is not interested in me also? So I'm going to make a video about that, um, about like, yo, 
you are what you attract, right? And so again, if we're just going from worldly um, sinful men, it's very easy for them to pursue, right? And so if you do have men of God um, pursuing you, then you have to be like, hey, um, am I living off of a biblical standard? So that's just godliness, holiness, not having sin in your life. Boom, we're going off of that. Or um, are men pursuing me, but they're not my preference? <laughs> because that's a reality. I'm going to be real, real, real candid, right? And so I don't think um, women, especially, not even just women of God, Christian women, I just don't think women um, in general are as honest when it comes to, um, I guess, like attraction um, when it comes to yourself, right? So, for instance, right? Everybody wants a 10. <laughs> Everybody wants a fine person that's godly, all that, all that, right? A 10, right? But I think men are way more open to being like, hey, I'm a 7. I'm, hey, I'm listening. I can say I'm a solid 7. <laughs> but I don't think women are honest with themselves about where you are. It's like, you are a, I'm just saying what it is. You are a 5, a 6, a 7, um, but one a 10, right? And it's like, no, <laughs> stay in your lane, right? And I think uh, one of the hardest things, right, is being honest enough with yourself to be like, I attract what I am, right? So you have to add something else to the table. Like, I'm a solid set seven on just attracting it. We're going through Western culture, attracting this. I'm like, eh, I ain't no Idris Elba, no Justin Bieber, Brad Pitt out here. I know where I lie, right? But I got this thing, so I bring it to the, tele, uh, to the table. Um, I know for sure my intelligence bumped me up to an eight, right? And I know like my walk with God um, can bump me up to a nine. But if I'm just going off a of physical attraction, I'm like, eh. <laughs> I'm average height, <laughs> not six foot. Um, actually in pretty good physical shape. Um, and what else? I got a degree, kind of funny. Um, but I just need to know I am attracting what I am, right? So a lot of women want to clown men, for, right? For not having a beard, being short, being fat, but will not be honest with themselves about what? Being fat also, being um, ugly, because men can be ugly too, right? Um, but we're honest about our ugliness. Um, I don't, I don't know what other things uh, men <laughs> don't like with not pursuing, but you have to acknowledge that, no, my preferences are not aligning with men are attracted to me. And yo, you have to <laughs> own up to it, <laughs> right? So number two, I think a lot of women are oblivious or not honest about men actually pursuing, but you just not being interested. So men are, so number three, oh, <laughs> why men do not pursue women of God. I won't keep this real honest. Too many options. And this is what I mean. Um, the church is primarily 80s to 90% female. If yo, people don't know this, church got fine women in there. So church got some fine women in there. So there's a word <laughs> that I won't use because I'm saved, but it starts with an H. <laughs> And this is what perception when it comes to men. So instead, I want to use the word player. Men do not want to look like players by jumping from woman to woman because all that shows is really um, a lack of intentionality. And it just shows um, that you're being led by the flesh, right? Because there are so many like attractive women in church. Like I know like certain places that's not actually the case, but if you come from like a major city like Los Angeles, Atlanta, New York, Houston, Dallas, Miami, um, that 89% is a good percentile that you could just choose from multiple women. Um, so you don't want to look like a player striking out from one woman and moving to the other. So here's the thing that um, should be a warning, a man, um, that's moving from woman to woman um, in the church is moving in the flesh, right? And so you have to be way more, um, this is like, again, man perspective. You have to be way more um, discerning, intentional, and direct about um, who you choose, right? And so 
when you have like a whole bunch of these um, options, you have to really be um, led by the Holy Spirit uh, because there's a lot of nuance when it comes to um, having these uh, many options and women's attracting attractiveness right because this is legitimately what a man um, thinks about right because there's nuance between um, girl code and social dynamics and friend group when you are pursuing a woman to God so and this is also comes from Proverbs 7. It talks about the importance of a good reputation in church in a good name. So nobody wants to be known as like some player dude or not even not a player, just like this, I don't know, thirsty dude that just slides in girls DMs or um, ask one girl out and you strike out and then you ask their friends. So you actually need to know what you're doing. <laughs> um, but a thing that men men think about is um, friend group dynamics, social um, dynamics, and um, girl code. Because legitimately, when you pursue one girl, girl code says that all of her other friends are off limits, right? And so you really have to be intentional with all these options. It's like, man, there's a whole bunch of like tens, nines, eights, or whatever. Find women here with great personality, godly. And they all have the same friend group. So if I go for uh, girl A, girl B, C, and D are all friends together. So they're going to be off the table, even though I might like B, C, and D um, in attractiveness also. So I think that you should credit men uh, for not having player habits within the church because that's that's what we move in um, the world and we're like we're grown now and I think that dynamic is real weird um, so you have to be able to um, gauge relationships um, and that's what's called wisdom it's like hey I need to know if basically if I shoot my shot um, I'm going to make it versus messing up friend group and dynamics by um, moving off of sin and not knowing um, that I'm moving off of the flesh and the consequences of sin. So it's just like um, men can gauge um, like interests and all that stuff without um, actually being in a relationship with you. So I can gauge being in a relationship um, with you just like how you're talking in friend groups, how you um, act in social settings like church, Bible study, um, Christian comedy shows, concerts, worship nights, or whatever. I don't actually have to be in a relationship with you. So, a lot, I'm giving y'all game right now, ladies. A lot of women are disqualifying themselves just by how they act within friend groups. Yo, men are like looking at how you are treating waiters, how um, you serve in church, how you um, gossip and talk to your other friends. I don't have to be in a relationship with you to gauge how you would be like in a relationship because that's actually how um, biblical courtship used to go. Um, up in the Old and New Testament. Um, it's way different now well, with the onslaught of social media and um, just different like even like advancements in cars and like fatherlessness. There's so much more um, to add to the equation um, now. So yo know this uh, when it comes to all these options um, you use more discernment um, just by gauging how people interact um, with me uh, as an individual but also how you interact with other males how you interact with headship with your church how you serve and all this other stuff I don't actually have to be in a relationship with you to gauge um, being in a relationship with you just like sin I don't need to sin to know the consequences of sin so just know we have a lot of options out here so there has to be something that um, basically gets you out of the crowd um, something that um, gets you to the forefront and actually having so many options actually showcases as a man that I really don't have no options and again being led by the flesh being led by attraction not um, personality or anything like that Number four, this is the big one I'm giving y'all game, ladies, for real. Number four is interest, all right? And this is all based off of um, social interactions and men reading and gauging temperature. 
I want to say this right now, we are grown. If you are in that 18 to 35 range and up, <laughs> we are grown. And what I mean by this is that we need to stop acting as if we are not interested in people that we are interested in. And this is really hard for men, right? Because again, we have all of those options that I said earlier, right? So if I'm interested in option A, option B, both of them like me, but option A um, is behaving as if I am their brother in Christ, which is biblical, right? But um, in a way where I think that there is no potential of a relationship, you have just disqualified yourself, and then I am going to option B. Because y'all are both physically attractive, y'all are both living out this Jesus walk, y'all are both... Um, I guess my friends in some object. So I'm just reading um, the potential of these two, right? And so I think it's Proverbs 19, wherever it says about he who finds a wife finds a good thing and uh, finds favor with the Lord. A lot of women <clears throat> are mischaracterizing that as in um, if I'm showing interest in him as a man, I am pursuing and it's the man's job to pursue. That's not what that scripture means. <laughs> that scripture um, does not mean fine as in to chase. It means fine as in obtain, to get. So he who gets a wife gets uh, favor with the Lord, right? And so guys are dumb. <laughs> um, and I think we're very simple in the fact that we gauge interest with interest, right? And so we just need, um, I guess, like just standoffishness not to exist in the church. If you like a guy, I'm not saying you have to tell him. I do need men to be men. That's going to be my fifth point. Um, but I do need women to be friendlier. And I think that's Proverbs 18. If you want friends, you must show yourself friendly. So if you're constant, I'm telling you what, this is a man perspective. You need to have a man give you game on men. Um, if you are constantly, even if you use this all the time, this is a man perspective. If you are constantly calling me bro, your brother in Christ, or just doing a whole bunch of stuff, um, I don't know that it just seems as if we are friends to one another. Yes, we're friends, but I think there should be friends with the potential of a relationship in some type of like, I ain't even saying you gotta flirt, but I mean, yo, if I'm looking handsome, just tell me I'm looking handsome. <laughs> I'm for real. Um, if I, but I'm telling you, in um, a relationship dynamic, compliments go a long way for men. Um, and I'm just like, ah, so what you're telling me is that there's a chance. <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw um, that movie Dumb and Dumber, but that's what men are. <laughs> Dumb and dumber. Um, so we just need something to go off of and be like, hey, this may have the potential of working out. So I just need uh, women not to be, I'm not even saying like y'all are standoffish, um, but <clears throat> I am kind of saying y'all are standoffish. It's just like, I ain't saying you gotta, I don't know, touch a man. But really, we read social cues and um, body language. I'm not saying do the most under any circumstance. Men need to be men. But I am saying you are disqualifying yourself by, I don't know, friend zoning yourself, sister and being extra churchy. Um, with stuff. Um, and I'm not saying, Brad, don't be asking for men's numbers. Let a man be a man. Uh, but I am saying, um, do something to show um, interest. I don't know what. <laughs> I would like to be called handsome. I don't know if all guys want to, but um, I don't think that is pursuit of a man. Don't ask a man out. That's weird. Um, and it's desperate. That, that's dumb. All right. And then number five, uh, why? Christian men do not pursue Christian women. And this is the one we already know. Five is cowardice. Um, being afraid, right? 
I don't think that um, we should pacify men for being passive um, when it comes to pursuing a woman. And I literally think that social media is one of the worst things that could have been added when it comes to um, Christian dating. Because it just has this inactive pursuit where you're creating like the illusion of pursuit and the illusion of relationship without any of the responsibility or any of the activity of being a man and actually laying your cards on the table. So it just seems like um, men want all of the benefits of pursuit and being in a relationship and having the elements of uh, pursuit with none of the responsibility, none of the commitment of, yo, know, just put your emotions and feelings out there if you're actually um, liking a woman um, or liking you as a woman. So I think um, you shouldn't let uh, men off. I think that uh, we need to stop pacifying being passive. Um, there's no intentionality in emojis. There's no directness in DMs. There's no activeness in ambiguity. Ambiguity, only confusion. Um, whatever happened to, um, hey, can I take you out on a date? Um, will you be my girlfriend? Um, can I court you? Um, can I pursue you in marriage? I think there should be that, right? And I think um, men don't have to say all four or five of those statements, but I think that they should say one of those <laughs> and actually um, be men. And I think that a lot of men um, don't want their feelings to be hurt. And yo, I don't know, because <laughs> like I don't come from a church background or say I come from like a world setting, right? And so. Like, in the world, it used to be like a game, like, how many <laughs> numbers you could pull. Um, it's very carnal, it's very fleshly and sinful, but um, you just put yourself out there. I think that's just something men need to be able to do. It's like, yo, know, uh, put your heart out there. You, I, I think men's self-esteem should be able to withstand rejection and stop pacifying it via social media. So I'm actually going to make um, two videos about that um, for the men how to pursue a woman of God, and then for the women, how to be pursued by a man of God. Those videos will be coming up in my like relationship series, so make sure you turn on your bell notification so you can be notified when those videos drop. All right. Um, but I just think um, you should let um, men be men, um, let them pursue actively, and I don't think um, there will be confusion when um, men are like actively um, being in their roles as like the headship um, of like the household and like the priest. So don't like baby them. <laughs> And so, uh, one of the things about cowardice I don't think women take into account is friendship dynamic, all right? And one of the things is that um, usually good relationships are usually built on a good friendship. And so, men, when we're interested in a woman, we are risking um, <laughs> the friendship dynamic when we're trying to basically get out of the friend zone. And um, when I say this, I mean... I don't think women are um, I'm just gonna say this, mature enough to not start acting funny and not go back to normal once um, men's feelings or emotions are known and interests. And then you just start acting weird. And then so not only have you lost a relationship if she's not interested in you and rejects you, you have also lost a friend because you might have like really good conversation uh, <laughs> and whatever. So those are my top five reasons men do not pursue um, women of God. So, number one, we're godly. <laughs> so we're living this out. Um, <laughs> my behind laughing too much. Um, number two, we actually do. Um, women just aren't interested as much as they say. Um, number three, um, too many options, right? Um, number four, women do not show reciprocity and interest right and then number five 
sometimes men are really cowardly. Um, <laughs> and need to be able to handle rejection more easily. But yo, um, let me hear from y'all if y'all think I missed anything um, in this video. Um, why you think um, Christian men don't pursue women of God or just um, are afraid or whatever reasons, all right? And so um, this is my new series, my relationship series. Um, come back next week, next Thursday for another um, relationship video. Next video, ladies, I'm moving from the man perspective to the uh, female perspective top five reasons you are still single uh, bruh, i'm keeping this 100 i'm gonna be very <laughs> raw i'm gonna be very candid about um the things christian women do that keep them single so make sure that um you hit that bell notification you come back um, next week and hit that like button that subscribe button and comment below i really want to hear um your perspectives on things you think you're doing that's keeping you single and um I do want to say this, I personally do not think that single people should um, be giving relationship advice just like you don't take money advice from um, bankrupt people uh, because you know why? They do not have a proven product. But what I am able to tell you is everything that will keep you single as a single person and things that will not work in um, relationships because they have not um, worked for me um, as a single person and so I actually just want to give a whole bunch of like help and advice so y'all can learn from my mistakes and um, y'all can navigate um, singleness and also relationships also yeah so I just want to thank y'all for watching um, make sure to hit that like button that subscribe button turn on your bell for notifications uh, remember that this video has been sponsored by his a branch on um, the his a brand with their solo Cristo um, shirt um, make sure oh, um, to support them in the description box below click the link in our bio and we also have some giveaways um, happening too so even um, with that we may we're not we're gonna give away a different shirt um, y'all gonna see um, in the next video um, but if you want to um, be entered into the video um, follow them on social media uh, comment somewhere that Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy, whoever, <laughs> the Blessing Report sent you there. and Or even just comment on this video that, um, hey, enter me to win. That, that, that's all you gotta do um, for a free shirt. And I think that's it. <laughs> um, come back next week for a relationship series. Remember that um, God blesses people by using people to bless people. So how have you been a blessing to someone else today? Thanks for watching.